Well, yes, I do feel good today. Thank you. I feel pretty good. I feel good today because, uh, in all honesty, like, I know people are losing and they lost, but I just feel like this this had to happen in the crypto market to move forward. That's just how I feel like it, it had to be. And uh, pain is a hell of a teacher. And here we are. And I'm just glad that you guys listened to me and took your crypto off of the exchanges like I was talking about all the time and went from there. Let's see here. Start. Uh, rational evidence is uh, Dan. Please watch BitBoy's video from yesterday, live stream, proof of theft from beginning new material. Oh, yeah. I mean, look, that guy's, if the guy doesn't go to jail, there's something wrong with our system. Uh, let's see. And Mr. Wolf says, Noriel Rubini, also known as Dr. Doom, is the economist calling out CZ, says he looks and acts like a cab driver from Naples, Italy. I love that there, there was a segment I watched it where he said he talked negatively about CZ and how he's a crook and how crypto, of course, is a scam. And then he goes in to talk about his own fund. I'm just like, well, but if you would have invested in our fund, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, ah, yeah. That's good salesmanship. Uh, Tellingard says they were buying Bitcoin, then doing the withdrawal. Paper Bitcoin could not be put on chain. Exactly true. You can't just put anything on chain. It's, uh, Bitcoin is there. And it's, uh, of course, it's verified by all the node operators. And that's why we have Bitcoin miners to secure the network. That's true. VJ says, VJ Dinath Chawan, I think I said that right. He says, you promoted FTX, BlockFi, Voyager, and Celsius. True, I did. Uh, FTX is uh, one of those things where I talked about like I used it, but very sparingly. But still, I did use it. I did talk about it. And of course, I talked about the rules and things like that. BlockFi, I didn't promote BlockFi ever. I, I don't, didn't understand that whole process. But Voyager and Celsius, yes, I absolutely did. And you are correct. However... I will just remind uh, VJ, I have no problems reminding everybody that uh, yes, I did that. And yes, it was a, uh, not, not the greatest thing. But I will tell you, Voyager and Celsius worked until they didn't, until they got ahead of themselves. In some kind of, either they had to step up their, their yield game or they just did some bad practice and bad management and uh, went against their risk assessment team. I don't know. But the, they, they screwed up somewhere. But again, they worked until they didn't. So this is the timeline. On June 12th, I, taught, I did a video. There's a video link right there. I says, hey, I came back from consensus. I go, something's going on with uh, Celsius. If you don't like it, take your crypto off. I've been hearing some reports. And that was at 11 a.m. 9 p.m., withdrawals were frozen. Admittedly, yes. That was a little bit uh, tight of a time frame. I got you. However... That's where the five rules were set on June 20th. I put them up. I'm always talking about that. June 22nd, I learned that Voyager, hey, gave 500 million, I think it was 640 million plus to uh, Three Arrows Capital. I said, look, I'm going to still use Voyager, but I'm, I'm not going to leave my crypto on Voyager and I'm going to take it all off. Then two weeks later, withdrawals were frozen. So, okay, you got me. But in all honesty, I did tell you this, right? Weeks in advance. And then, of course, the last four months, I've been harping on the same thing and talking about my rules. So if you're going to blame me on FTX, I don't know what to tell you, pal. I mean, I get it that it sucks, but uh, I look, we all got hosed in the deal. It's not like I had some some backward deal with, with SPF to, to promote them in any way, shape, or form. I didn't have anything for them. So it's like, I mean, when I learned, you learned. When the facts change, I change. That's it. Ah, Crypto Esquire. Everyone will take a haircut from FTX except SPF. No, I think Sam's going to take a nice haircut. There's usually a nice haircut when you go to prison. Maybe I'm wrong. Alex Kazaziani. Nailed it. Hope I said that right. Are you still DCing some cryptos? I am, but uh, I'm really, really lessening because I, the more that I see with this contagion and the things that are going on and the recession that's coming up in 2023, still things can happen. I'm very leery about DCing. I've actually reduced even my micro DCing. And I've gone from everything now is uh, once a week. And the amounts have actually reduced because I think there's some, some, some troubling times ahead. Now, does that mean I've stopped altogether? No, but I've slowed down to a snail's pace of buying crypto right now. And it's very, it's not very much whatsoever, in all honesty. And that's where we're at. Because I think there's some more troubling times ahead. Does that mean that we're going to have troubling times forever? No. That just means that 
I'll be honest with you, 2023 is going to suck, I think. But uh, I'll still be here. And I'll still be buying a little bit here and there. And let's just say, let's just say that, uh, you know, Bitcoin goes to 13K. Well, what in 20, what about in 2025, 26, it goes up to all time high? Maybe it hits 69K again. I'll be celebrating. You'll be celebrating. It'll be okay. If I just buy a little bit along the way, I think I'll be all right. As long as I don't invest more than I can afford to lose, should be all right. Gary, it's a good time to take a massive loss in Seoul before it gets hairier. Yeah, who knows? Who knows about Solana? It all depends on you know what you think it's going to be and where you think it's going to go. Well, okay, so Dan, thank you, Dan. Blaming you tears for your own lack of due diligence says more about you than it does about them. I, I will. I need to stress one thing about about this. It's nothing. It's it's nothing about uh, VJ and what he said, and it's nothing about the things that go on. I, I will remind everybody that, you know, we always talk about in, the, in this industry. Well, do your own research and do your due diligence, like Dan is talking about, which he is correct. However. You can do as much research as you want to do. But if somebody is committing fraud behind the scenes, you'll never know. You'll never know before it's too late. That's why I'm always preaching diversification. Did you know that uh, Bernie Madoff, he was, I mean, he was in business for decades. And he was actually a legit uh, Wall Street person. And then at the, towards the very end, he started, not towards the very end, but for years, he was just running a big Ponzi scheme. He thought he'd get away with it. And he almost did. And you never knew until, of course, the bear market came in 2007, 8, and 9. That's what uh, exposed him. So for all the due diligence we did, like you don't think that that uh, the Mooch, Anthony Scaramucci, did a hellacious amount of, of research in his team on FTX. Mr. Wonderful, same thing all the different athletes that uh, got into it, all the different organizations. I mean, hell, even, even Simon Yu from Stormax, founder and, and head of uh, Stormax the Crypto, he's the one that told me about Celsius. And he's the one that asked people about SBF and uh, FTX. And they said, no, nah, it's all FUD. I mean, these are like big insiders, big people in the crypto space, and even they didn't know. So in all honesty, I can tell why people are pissed off because like, well, I'm, I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do and I still get screwed. And that, I think, is a scarier proposition to understand. That sometimes it doesn't matter how much you do. It's just bad things happen because people are running straight up scams. And they're screwing you over. Again, that's why I have the rules in place for myself. You can follow them or not, but uh, they've done pretty well by me so far. And that's it. Ah, uh, <laughs> There's no dumb questions, trust me. Dan, a dumb question, question one. Can ledger seed phrases be used with Tracer to retrieve funds and vice versa or transfer over to uh, ledger, uh, et cetera? So, so seed phrases, mnemonic phrases, and, and they're the same thing you know, just across the board. There's what allows you to give back. So you can use them whatever you want to. But uh, it depends on, I'm not for sure exactly on how Trezor works. I just know with Ledger, you just put, put the mnemonic phrase back in, then off you go. So that's it. Jason JJJ says, hey, Rob, any rumors yet on total polygon exposure to FTX? Uh, there's rumors, but uh, they're not substantiated. So right now, the question I think I have for everybody is this is, are these the, did the projects fail us or did the exchanges fail us? Every, so far, every exchange has failed us, totally screwed us. And the only thing that's, that's, that's failed us in DeFi are the DeFi protocols that uh, just were, I think, just pretty much rug pulls from the get-go. So uh, I, still, I still hold uh, Polygon. I think I do pretty well. And it says it works with Tracer too. Okay. <laughs> Whoa. Beardy. But we still have each other. That's right, Right, man. That's it. <laughs> Jay O'Keefe. Jay O'Keefe's got a good point. None of these exchanges did have Cardano. That's true. They didn't. Does Gemini have Cardano? Because they just had to suspend their earn program. And I'm just calling it out there. 
<laughs> Benjamin Cohen. Have you guys ever seen this guy? S relatively smart gentleman. Got a decent channel. You should check him out. I also steal all of his stuff from uh, from his website. And uh, I definitely recommend it. Yes, Ben, I sent you the information over. DCA Lab tomorrow. Where we're going to talk about all our mistakes tomorrow. So tune in for that. <laughs> Vicky, Ben's YouTube channel. Excellent right there. Uh, who? Yeah, who is this Ben guy? Probably some spammer. Let's see. Vicky, Ben's a Chris fight. Uh, let's see. Nick, hey, Rob, how do we know Binance doesn't get shut down by the feds in the future? It's a good question. So the thing is, there's, you have to understand there's Binance International and there's Binance US. Binance US could be shut down, I mean, at any point. It's a centralized exchange, which means a centralized uh, uh, area of failure. However, with the, um, with the global uh, Binance centralized exchange, the Fed, the Fed, the government, the U.S. government, I mean, they can shut down U.S., but they can't shut down uh, the international uh, exchange. And that's another thing. It's like when we talk about all these, all these uh, regulations coming about and things, and I think there's some things that could be done to, to help out. I don't think that, that the first of all, there was a great comment uh, from Bernard. Uh, from yesterday, and he was in the um, uh, uh, nuclear facility business for 30 years. And he talked about how the government regulated the nuclear facilities. However, between each of the facilities, they had their own um, uh, in, internal SOPs, standard operating procedures, and they kind of kept each other in check. And that was even more so than uh, the government regulations, which I got to applaud him because that would make sense to me to do those things, to make things at, at a higher level. So, you know, we didn't have a, a total meltdown. I can see the same thing happen here with, with the government going, look, CZ Binance and Binance came out and said, we're going to have to take a look at uh, uh, proof of reserves. That's a great step, right? Move that, move those things forward. However, when people are moving their crypto around from exchange to exchange to exchange, things are a little bit fishy. So that's a good first step. I think audits could do pretty well. Uh, by the government, I guess. And then, of course, the big thing is no commingling of funds. I don't see the point of, you, you, you can't do that. And then the, I think the biggest, biggest thing is just this. If you have proof of reserves, great. If you can also show us some liabilities, fantastic. That's the whole point of public companies and things like that. But if you can come in and say, uh, here's the proof of reserves, uh, here's uh, the liabilities, here's what, what we're doing as far as commingling or not commingling, and just make it transparent, so much the better. I think the exchanges that do that will thrive, and the ones that are sketchy, those people will go to them and they'll get burnt, and they quite honestly will deserve it after that. Now, I will be here to hopefully help people out to say, hey, I got three reasons why you should you know, not screw around with this. It's called uh, Voyager, Celsius, and FTX. Remember those? And we go from there. But that's just how I see things, and it could be wrong. The crypto shop. Rob, Ben, and James, the Holy Trinity. Uh, don't make a saint out of a sinner, but I appreciate you. Thank you. Ah, Bjarki. Legend. Sorry to stake part of my holdings in your pool. You have to wait 10 days to get the rewards, but I need to wait until six of Des Why? It doesn't make you a long deposit to draw from it. Bjarki, I don't know if we're talking about, uh, uh, if we're talking about Cardano, because that, that's the only pool I have any, uh, anymore. I used to have a uh, Avalanche one, but we did that for a year and stopped it. It's up to the protocol, in all honesty. And actually, let me show you something. Hopefully I have this. If you're not, if first of all, if you're staking on an exchange, please take your Cardano off the exchange. If you'd like to stake with somebody, I got two options for you. You can put on mine. I got a couple of uh, Cardano stake pools. We're 99.9% .9 uptime, almost uh, 100%. And we're doing pretty well. Also, you can check out Ben. I think Ben's got a couple of uh, Cardano stake pools. And it works out pretty well. So links in the description. I show you how to do it and all that good stuff. What I am looking for... Aha, uh -huh, right here. So... As far as delegation, Jorky, it's a great question. And it really comes down to this part right here. So you have to understand, 
when we initially stake for the, del the delegating cycle, it's all put forth. We don't, we don't set the rules. The Cardano Foundation sets the rules. So again, if you stake in like Epic, I know, I know how people say it's, it's, it's Epic, ep Epoch, Epic. So Charles says it, so I'm just gonna say it like that. It's gonna take a while. Uh, because it depends on when you actually get into. Every epic is five days, and it takes at least, at the bare minimum, I believe, uh, 15 days to go from one to get the rewards. And uh, it could take up to 20 days. But remember, if you unstake here, you're still going to get them for another two or three epics. That's just how it works. I, I didn't make the rules. I just follow the rules, and that's that. All righty. Love DCA. This is a good question. Fam. Fam Tenzing. Dan, what are your chances that someone will buy FTX? Do you think or do you know people who are buying a FTT token cheap right now? Or it's really game over and I should sell my FTT tokens now? Oof. That would be a great question for your financial advisor. Or your dad. And of course, I'm neither of those. So, so fam, I don't know about this one. I know some people made a killing shorting this one. But uh, I wouldn't play with it. It's just not my my wheelhouse. I'm just not that smart to do the trading. So, sorry. <laughs> Robert says, do, do you think our Bitcoin and iTrust Capital is safe? Kind of wish I didn't open an account. So, iTrust Capital, I just recorded a video uh, with the CEO of uh, iTrust. Also, uh, the CEO of uh, Crypto Trader or Coin Ledger for the tax services. That'll be out on Saturday. I asked him these specific questions. How are we sure that things are safe, especially in iTrust? Because it's a retirement account. It's a Roth IRA. And he says, you have to understand where the funds come from. And he goes, and he said it perfectly. He said, the exchanges, the ones that are doing the right things, they charge you a fee for a transaction. And that's it. And they make good money. And they are prudent in their investments that they do with that money. And they hire people accordingly and they grow or they, they, they uh, prune off or whatever. But they don't do crazy things. They don't uh, make uh, crazy loans. They don't take things out. And he goes, and then for us, you know, we have everything, uh, the same thing that MicroStrategy uses, which is Coinbase custody. That's where your crypto funds are. And I asked them specifically about the uh, proof of reserves. He says, we're going to work on that. That's one of the plans for uh, coming up, uh, uh, moving forward. And um, that's it. And of course, you have to understand, where does iTrust Capital make their revenue? It's very simple. Uh, when you buy crypto on their platform for your retirement account, they charge you a percentage. And I think it's 1.1 1, 1 or 1.25. I always forget. Coinbase does the same thing. Binance is the same thing. The ones that uh, uh, do the crazy stuff, and even Binance, I mean, they have leveraged plays. I don't know if they have, I don't remember they have loans. They do have some yield because of the staking, things like that. And then, of course, uh, their main thing is just the trading fees. And they're doing pretty well. They're the largest uh, exchange out there. So, Robert, I will just say this. If you if you feel uncomfortable about it and you still don't, don't like it, then get out of there. You got to talk to your CPA and make sure that they understand because you can, you know, you can move funds around uh, for your Roth IRA. But remember, there is a tax liability if you sell your, or if you, not sell, but if you cash out and take the cash for a retirement account, that is here in the United States. If you're someplace else, I'm not for sure. So uh, I would talk with the guys, but that's what it is. I personally have left it there. I've used them for two years. Unfortunately, I can only put $7,000 a year in there and uh, that's it. Now, if I lose for some, let's say something happened, I don't know. Coinbase custody is a, is a shell. And it was run by Sam Bakeman Freed's twin brother. I don't know. And we lose everything. If I lose it, it's not going to crush me. You know, that's why I diversify. And that's about it. So Amy's with Beardy. Good to know. <laughs> ben Amartasia ben says, uh, yeah, the chat of the last DCA show was too early to even upload. It was pretty rough. That's a good point. Ben says, Struggle Street eventually intersects with Bull Run Highway, but the exit is still a few miles ahead. Remember that. Remember that when, of course, we're looking towards the future. 
Right now, it seems kind of rough, but it always seems rough. It seemed rough. Like I remember in 2018 when I was like, God darn it. I bought the top of Bitcoin and everything else. And now everything just dropped by 80 some percent. This sucks. I could sell, but I said, ah, I'm going to try this DCA thing and see how it works. I think, I think things are going to grow. We're going to get more institutions and in. I think things are going to do well. It did. It just, it's amazing though. Like during the bear market, you you just feel it more so because you hear it all around you and then you feel more fear. And then of course in the bull market, you feel more, more hubris, more of the ability to go, you know what? I'm invincible. I don't need to sell this. I know I had a plan, but the hell with the plan. I'm going to keep going forward. And I think that's what crushes us. I think if we just have the plan and move forward and we know that bear cycles don't last forever, just like bull cycles don't, I think we'll be okay. Good point, Ben. Ah, uh, Rich. Hey, Rob, when are you going to do the coin ledger video on tax stuff? I did an old one. I'll do an upload, uh, a new one. If you like, there's a, there's a link in the description. And I know I got a lot of links, but, uh, I got, I mean, one to a free website called Dan teaches crypto. I don't know if you heard about this one, this one, how to figure out if it's a scam email. I like that. Here's my exchange. I'm actually using uh, Kiva to do micro loans, which of course, some of the revenue that we generate from the kernel stake pool, we give to Kiva. There's a stake pool. I trust changes. Ah, here it is. Crypto taxes made simple. It's an affiliate link. If you can't stand affiliate links, just go right to cryptotrader.tax. But the how to use the video is right here, and I walk you through it. So don't be afraid of taxes. Just get them done, and then go from there. I know taxes suck, but uh, at least with at least with uh, Coin Ledger makes it simple. I tell you, the time that I integrate my API integration with the exchanges, which are fewer now to uh, when I spit it out, it doesn't take too long. Now, the big question that I have is, is Voyager going to be able to, Voyager and Celsius is going to be able to push out uh, that data for, for tax purposes. By law, they are supposed to, so we will see. Potsky <laughs> says, Ben, unblock me. Ah. Filomino says, are you guys in the USA hearing much of the FTX? I'm in the UK, I'm not. I guess it's just here in the US, but it is global, FTX global. I wonder how big it is. I mean, FTX is either, if not the second largest crypto exchange, it was at least the third. Mike says, can you stake with Ledger? Great question, my man. And let me show you. So go oh, here, Daniel Scrippa, sign up. It'll, it'll cost you an email and I will spam the heck out of you. No, I'm just kidding. I only email you when I upload a new video, which isn't, uh, which isn't too often, quite honestly. Let me log in. Oh, I'm logged in. So there's two things to note. One, go to module two safety, figure out about the scammers, how to avoid scams. I go over the ledger, how to use it, how to set up your nano ledger, your ledger live app, how to transfer crypto, how to back it up, uh, to, everything you wanna know, how to update the firmware. Cool, cool. And then for this one, it's talking about staking. Module five, how do I stake crypto? And this one in particular, uh, how do I stake on stake Polkadot for passive income? I show you exactly how to set it up with Ledger and the same thing with Cosmos and the same thing with Near Protocol. So yes, you can stake within your Ledger and that's the way that I prefer to do it personally. That's just me. And that's it. So hope that answers your question. And uh, <laughs> Cardigan B says, I don't listen to news, only Twitter. Yes, I'm seeing a lot of it. If you want to find anything, go to Twitter. That's where everything happens. Thank you, Romulus. Cody, currency of the internet. I should probably do a deep dive on that. Da, Jarky, I'm talking about ground. Yeah, man, it takes a long time. It's just the way that, the way that they set it up. Once you're in there, it's very simple. Thank you, Tom. Andrew Lever says, Ada will be at five cents by next week. He must have a crypto ball. Listen to that man. I'm just kidding. I don't know if it's true. But if it is, that's cool. Because that's one of the cryptos that's IDCA. And I moved it back to every week. 
and less amounts because I don't know where things are going. Yes, Trip says, Rob, is your credit all pool still supporting your charity? Yes, absolutely. So charity is, is Kiva, and it's also going to be going towards uh, Protechos, which is uh, it's a nonprofit organization here that uh, they build uh, uh, rooftops for people who have been affected by hurricanes or and mostly it's uh, lower income individuals because that's just how it is because you know i can't afford it so i give to them i actually give to them uh for my my annual amount that i have to give to uh to to local communities here for um for for my requirements here for uh Puerto Rico. But anyhow, to answer your question, yeah, we just did, we just did, we just gave, matter of fact, this was on, when was this? November 13th. And uh, we gave, it was mostly Puerto Rico people, Javier, Antonio, and Yadio. And we gave them to help them with their startups. Also, Antonio was a farmer, helping him to uh, grow his business, and Yadio, same thing. So, yeah, we still do it. I think it's important to do those things, even though you know, the market sucks. Doesn't mean that everything sucks. You can make a difference. Just uh, little things, right? Just like we talked about. Many mickles make, makes a muckle. <laughs> this is the dumbest phrase. But it does make sense. You decided to change your green screen? Yes. I changed, my mom was uh, tired of the same angle. So she said, you should probably change that. Mm, Tab says, Rob, I think you can't say Thank you. Uh, Carsey corrects and that guy, but you can restore on a software wallet. I think you're, I believe you're correct. Yes. <laughs> Any good 10 years treasury bonds to buy? There's many. Get as many as you want to. Stable. Oh, I mean, it doesn't keep up for inflation, but I mean, obviously neither did a uh, crypto market. Ayn says, Rob, did you hodl back then to that work? It worked. I mean, look, in 2018, you were buying, you know, you buy Bitcoin at 5,000, 6,000. And then you, if you got lucky, you hit 3,000 in 2020, March 2020. And then, of course, Ethereum was below 500, 400, $300. Cardano was my, probably my best one, five, six, seven cents. And it worked out. But uh, I mean, that's, your the 2021 class is worse because like I didn't keep mine in a ledger. I didn't keep mine in a debtor's wallet. I kept them on, on an exchange. And if that exchange went down, all the hard work I did would have been all for naught. So these are the days that I appreciate when we're moving forward and we realize we can't do that. But yeah, it worked out pretty well. Now the 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 next question is, did I sell as much as I should? And the answer is no. I got greedy. And I stuck I stuck to my plan somewhat. And I, you know, sold a good amount. I was able to buy, you know, more real estate with that. A house here in Puerto Rico, a couple of condos. And it worked out pretty well. However, if I would have sold uh, the, what I should have sold, I would have done even more so. However, that's, that's the, neither here nor there. Moving forward in 2025, 2026, I did a video where I talked about when and, and, when and how I'm going to sell my crypto. And it's specific. And a lot of these specifics come from a couple of different charts, uh, looking at Bitcoin. And also uh, we take a look at Ben's website into the cryptoverse. And I use that heavily, heavily uh, for my exit strategy. So that's uh, what it is. And you can find that video actually in Dan Teaches Crypto in the investing in module three investing. That's it. Thanks, Audrey. Oh, I know it gets repetitive. What? Beardy hit 88 steps this week. I don't know if you did you move your refrigerator farther away, Beardy, or what did you do? How did you make that many steps? Uh, just kidding. I heard, Mr. Wolf, I heard that the FTX hacker who stole all the all the crypto funds, they became the uh, 38th or 35th largest Ethereum holder <laughs> in the space. And I find that uh frighteningly hilarious, but uh, just sad and all general because they stole people's funds. Chip, 
It says bull market leads to hopium. Bear market will bring you back to reality. He's about the true dangers of hopium. Hopium is dangerous thing. And uh, I mean, if you're looking at it, it's, it's we took a look at the Stockdale paradox, the thing I've, I've talked about before. Stockdale paradox, it was uh, uh, Jim Stockdale. He was a prisoner of war in the Vietnam War. He was at the uh, uh, Hanoi Hilton where he was tortured for seven plus years. And uh, he says, he goes, the, the thing that crushed everybody was hope. I said, what do you mean hope? How does that crush people? That should whip them up. He goes, no, you don't understand. He goes, he goes, you have to understand the reality of the situation that you're at right now. He goes, people just kind of, you know, let that just loose and said, well, you know, it's okay. That, you know, we're here, we're getting tortured. He goes, but we don't really think about it too much. And then they started to get this hope in which he goes, the ones that didn't make it, the ones that died in those imprisonment camps, he said, we're the ones that would say, you know what? Things are bad right now, but in by Thanksgiving, we're out of here. You know what? Okay, things are bad right now, but Thanksgiving went past. But by Christmas, I heard from somebody who said somebody that they're going to release us and there's a deal with the United States. And then it would keep going and going and going. So they never really, they never, they never took hold of their situation and just realized just how crushingly uh, awful it was and had some realistic expectations. He goes, that's the type of, of, of hope that we don't need. He goes, you just have to realize where we're at. Look towards the future and be realistic about that future. And that was the Stockdale paradox. And he goes, that's what got me through. And that was it. So that's about it. I have deleted my Binance account one year ago. He was 100% DeFi. This is okay. So a video, I got a question for you. So when you use DeFi, how, where do you use your fiat on ramp? Is it just like a Bitcoin ATM? You know, how do you transfer fiat money into some type of crypto? Do you use like a, like, like a moon pay service, like 4% transaction fees and go from there or just, just whatever you have on hand? Just Ray, thank you for becoming a member. I appreciate it. That dollar uh, 99 cents is going to go to good use. I can tell you that right now. Thank you. I appreciate it. Jeff finally cuts in with a long day of working construction. What's up, Jeff? <laughs> Put down your hand and pick up a wrench. Class is in. Anybody want to be an administrator, an admin, a wrench? Let me know. Uh, so... Eden got a good question. I have a silly question. Not really. I use Kle Kepler with my ledger. I don't know what Kepler is. Uh, maybe that's a uh, a third party wallet with my ledger for Adam and Osmosis. Okay. If their blockchains go down, bankruptcy, et cetera, what happens to my coins? Well, if the if the I'll answer this in a couple of ways. If it's like Solana where it goes down for a little bit, it'll come back up. But if you're talking about how if if the chain itself if it goes to zero, well, then everything goes to zero. And that's really it. So everything that you stake. So like if you stake your Atom or Cosmos and you're gaining, I think it's a pretty high yield. I want to say it's around 14 to 16%. And let's say that you gain, I don't know, 20, 20 Atom tokens. And then, of course, Atom, which is, I want to say it's around a dollar maybe. It goes to zero. Everything you just gained is just zero. And that's it. So, yeah. What is the price of Cosmos right now? Let me know. Viper wall for Cody. Okay. Gong up says, yes, you can stick Ada with Ledger through Daedalus. That's very true. Where were you, Gong go up, when I lost all my Cardano in 2018? Wish I would have met you. I'm in the US, so I can't use Viper. Huh. Fam, thank you. Super sticker, five bucks. Sweet. I'll be sell. I'll be using that next week at the meetup. Smokehouse, Puerto Rico. Everybody should be there. Should be a fun time. I buy the first round of beers, so I don't see why you shouldn't show up. Cryptopia. I never seen the news in. <laughs> do you have the knowledge to set up a stake pool? No. No, I do not. I have a team that does it for me, and they they take care of everything. They were. The team that, that that does it for me were the ones that did 
their pool during the uh, testnet phase of Cardano. And they do multiple pools throughout different chains. They're the real experts. I am just the face of it. Always listen to mom. Exactly, Jeff. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Probably in China. <laughs> Went to the bag 26 times. That's true. Very true. Gerald says, I'm jealous of you guys here. I seem the only person to make any money in the past three years. You know, the market is like the rain in Puerto Rico. If you don't like it, just stick around for a bit. It'll change. And that's the same thing going on here. Look, uh, you know, some people say that Bitcoin and crypto is going to zero. It's not going to zero. And we talked about why. I mean, there's just too much money sloshing around. There's too much risk for other assets to not be here. And of course, there's too much taxes that the government can collect by short and long-term capital gains for them to let that sweet, sweet money go. So they're going to let this thing ride. And of course, innovation, I don't think they really want to stifle it and let it go to other country where they're going to dominate. So that's why I think America is going to get on the get on the ball and actually regulate it probably a little bit too much. However, <clears throat> knowing that and knowing these things, I felt the same way in 2018, 2019. I was like, damn it, I didn't make anything. I didn't sell anything. And everybody told me to diamond hands and they wouldn't lie to me. And the people that said that Bitcoin is going to a million, they wouldn't lie to me either. They were there. They always told me the same thing. Now here we are. So I was going to tell you this, Gerald. Don't feel bad because, first of all, Diamond Hands is dumb. Just hold on forever. That's not even what the white paper said for Bitcoin. It was a peerless transaction, peer-to-peer, -to, -peer, to be used for goods and services. So I don't know how, how people are talking about you know not selling it. If I have to sell Bitcoin to pay for goods and services, what's the problem? I sold Bitcoin to pay for a good, which is real estate. So as time goes on, you're going to find opportunities to sell. Bear markets don't last forever. And sure as hell, bull markets don't either. But just know the difference and just know when to get out. Have a plan. If you don't have a plan, it's okay. Watch, uh, watch James, Ben's, my channel, other people's channel. Uh, do the research as, as best you can. I know it's a dumb phrase, but uh, there's ways to get out of, to, there, there's a ways to get into a position, out of position profitably. It just takes a little bit of effort and time. You're right. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Gerald, there's no savers out there. The only saver, the only one that can save you is you, unfortunately. Really? You're the only YouTube comment that has ever answered my questions. Uh, I answer as many as I possibly can. Oh, Darth Mike is here. So the moral of the story is give up all. <laughs> I don't think that's not the that's not the moral of the story. The moral of the story is for the uh, Stockdale paradox is realize the gravity of the situation and have realistic expectations, right? Like Stockdale even talked about it. He goes, I knew I was going to get out of this hellhole. I said, no, exactly when. He goes, and that's what kept me going. I knew I would get out. I just don't know when. The same thing with these markets. I knew they. I I know they will change. I just don't know when. So if everybody's calling the bottom, you can listen to them, but most of them are wrong anyhow. So that's about it. Ah, I didn't know that. Ledger Live has good options to bridge. I have to take a look there. What? Interesting. Jay and Chow always has good comments and questions. Binance stablecoin is 40 billion, but half of it is tether. Ugh. Not back one by one reserve, mostly of Evergrande commercial papers. They're bank run tether auto but it's not dirty auto. Well, it's Binance. The question then is what is the uh, percentage of Binance stablecoin for its overall portfolio of assets? I think that would be the, the next bigger question. But that is concerning. However, I will say this, Mr. Chow. As much as I have been ambivalent or cautious, I would say, about uh, Tether, as much as I hate to use Tether, it still has stood the test of time so far. And that, I think, to me is impressive because, I mean, there's been run on the banks, run on stable coins, run on algorithmic stable coins. They've all collapsed. But here's Tether. 
even though I talk badly about it and say, well, they had an audit by somebody in the Bahamas and who knows if that's really the truth and how much they actually have, it's still here. I find it quite amazing. Ah, wrenches. So let's do some wrenches and get the heck out of here, huh? Hold on. Mm. Ah. Let me let the chat load and we'll go from there. If any time. I'll wrench everybody up in a second. Joby, everybody's doing good, man. Wrench me, Paul. Florian, you're welcome. <laughs> I have to ban myself. Nauseous, I'm not worthy of wrench. I think we're all wrench worthy, right? Wrench crew. DH, I answered this. No, I have a team that does it for me. They're much smarter than me. Technical people who are actual developers and can do stuff like that. Six bucks. Uh, huh. Let's see. There we are. Thoughts on the Solana future. I will say this. Jay Kiki, Kiki, congratulations. You're a moderator. Oh, but Jarky just gave the 10 digital asset news memberships. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Santa, Christmas comes early. To answer your question about Solana, just take a look at the concentration of wallets uh, and how much is held in each one of those wallets and go from there. That's all I'll say. You can use Masari. There's a uh, free, free version. Paul, I'll get you next time. I don't know you that well. <laughs> Mad Cat, you've already got one. Ben's got one. Old Bear. Well, Amy's been having one for Tesla's got one. Does everybody have one? There's more wretches than plebs. Jane Chow is definitely one. Nauseous is one. Jarky, aren't you one already? You should be. And thank you for gifting everybody these, these memberships. Everybody loves you. Ah. Uh, I think we could look at that. Ooh, that's nice. See? Good things happen when good people stop by. I just made that up. All right, everybody. So enjoy it, Bajarki. Thank you so much for gifting everybody that. That, uh, that helps lift the spirits and good for the soul. Let's get out of here, everybody. It's been an hour and four minutes. So look, if you like today's video and like to hang out with us, consider subscribing. Also, want to do a little like. Also, tomorrow. Another giveaway, we're going to do, I think we're going to do a daily giveaway for the uh, stone book or the shield folio so you can write down your mnemonic phrases and have them. I'll probably give away two tomorrow. I'll just go with that. And that's it. So show up tomorrow, do some giveaways and all that stuff, help lift some spirits, and that's it. So thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate everybody. Congratulations to the new wrenches. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Adios.